So we have an excess demand of snow shovels. And so this causes a problem for us, right? Not only because, because there's two, there's a couple of things going on with excess demand. One, yeah, I've sort of told the story of there's an excess demand, people are running around, they can't find anybody to buy a snow shovel from. But that's not really the whole story. Because not only are there going to be more people who want to buy a snow shovel than are going to be able to get their hands on one, we have to ask ourselves, of the people who are going to get a snow shovel, who's going to get the snow shovel, right? By not allowing the market to be the one who, who uh, like sort of says, okay, at this higher price, we're going to say who gets the snow shovel. Yeah, it's people who value it more than $45, right? And it, 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 by, by holding the price down, we have to find some other way to do that because there's more people who want a snow shovel at $30 than uh, there are people willing to sell a snow shovel at $30. So we can't get away from the problem of we need to decide how to allocate the stuff that we have. So there has to be some other method besides the price of deciding who's going to get the snow shovels. And there's a bunch of ways you could go about it. Maybe you could attempt to sell, sell a snow shovels to people who need the snow shovels most. But how do you do that? How do you know who needs them the most? Right? Maybe there's a couple of really obvious cases. You know, you know the one, the guy who lives way up on the hill uh, with a treacherous driveway. That guy, yeah, maybe really needs a snow shovel. But then you still have to allocate all the other ones. You don't know everybody perfectly. You don't know who needs them the most, really. Maybe you solve your close friends. Right, you're like, hey, friends, uh, I just snowed a whole bunch. I've only got like four snow shovels left. You better get in here real quick and I'll give them to you. Uh, maybe you're reserved for powerful people who can do favors, right? You call up the mayor and say, hey, mayor, uh, I set aside a snow shovel for you. Uh, come on in and get it. Maybe you make people wait in line, right? Which is slightly more fair than the other options, probably, or than the, than the middle two options, at least. Um, but uh, again, pretty arbitrary, right? Uh, that's not going to line up with who actually needs them. Who's going to come in and be able to wait in line for the longest? Probably not the person who's stuck in their house because they can't show all the driver, right? So we, by if, if we allow the price to come up here, this would this problem wouldn't be happening, right? There would be a number of people who are willing to buy a snow shovel at forty five dollars is exactly equal to the number who were uh, snow shovels that we'd have to be willing to sell. By not doing that, we have to choose some other way of allocating the stuff. So if the market is competitive. And the sellers who are going to be motivated by the opportunity to be higher prices, right, because the price has just risen, are going to bring in more snow shovels. Right? That's the sort of thing that's going on here. It's not just the fact that we, by increasing the price, fewer people want a snow shovel, but it's this part right here too the quantity of supply increase. If you wake up in the morning, you change the price to 45, what's going to happen? Well, you're going to call up everybody you know who lives with you and who uh, has a bunch of snow shovels and be like, hey, I'm, I'm going to sell a bunch of snow shovels today at a really high price. Give them in. I'll pay more than normal for snow shovels so I can sell them for more than normal. Uh, so you're going to have more snow shovels to sell. Not only is that store going to have some more snow shovels to sell, you wake up in the morning in Seattle and it snowed a bunch. Uh, somebody in uh, Tacoma is going to be like, oh, wow, snowed a bunch in Seattle. I better load up the truck with snow shovels, drive on up there. I'll sell a bunch of snow shovels. Right? So that's more people coming in and the quantity supply increasing. So existing sellers are going to bring in more snow shovels to sell because they want this nice high price. They're like, high prices, let's do it. Uh, or more potential sellers are going to come in once they realize the possibility for profit, right? If there's a profit being made, people who are outside the market sitting in Tacoma are going to be like, oh, I want that profit. And they're going to come to Seattle to sell their snow shovels. So a couple of things here. One, we're not going to end up having to have some other way of allocating the good. Uh, and also, this means that the price increase that we saw might be defrayed a little bit, right? So, you know, the, 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 the hardware store in Seattle who calls up and brings in much more snow shovels, uh, that's not going to really change anything. There's going to be a 45. But once a person shows up from Tacoma and a giant truck full of snow shovels, that's an increase in supply. Supply is going to shift to the right, which means that when price is going to come back down a little bit, right? So by allowing the market to sort of work, not only do you get the quantity that you need where you need it, but also this price gouging price that we had doesn't last very long. It gets competed away. As more people come in, the price falls back down, maybe not all the way to 30 where it started, but uh, less than 45. So by allowing this to happen, by allowing the price to go up, it relieves the excess demand, also provides incentive for other people to come in and, and supply the good, which means that the stuff is going where it is needed, right? If you're sitting in Tacoma, it's this nice sunny day in January for some reason, uh, and you hear that there's a bunch of snow in Seattle, 
but no one's raising the price on snow shovels, you're not going to get in your truck, right? Uh, and so those snow shovels are going to sit in Tacoma where they're not needed, whereas if the price did go, you would bring them where they were needed because you're being paid to do so, basically. Also, by the way, keep in mind, nobody's controlling any of this situation, right? It's individuals realizing there's an opportunity for profit and chasing it that brings the snow shovels where they need to be. So in a competitive market, the star increases demand, raises the equilibrium price, raises the equilibrium quantity. Uh, however, uh, if we do not allow it to go, we're going to stay at this price, which is going to keep the original quantity, but can be excess demand. Because of this increase in price, if there's a profit to be made in this area, as we mentioned before, when we're working on the individual uh, producers, uh, they see that profit, they're like, oh, I want some of that profit. I better move into this market. You load up your truck in Tacoma, you drive to Seattle, suddenly you have joined the market, which shifts supply. Oops, demand shifts right, you see the profit. Supply shifts right as the Tacoma drivers show up, which brings the price back down a little bit and eats up some of that profit that was generated there. Now, eventually, if the market isn't allowed to go for long enough, this brings us back to that long run equilibrium we talked about before. It some for some weird, crazy storm reason keeps snowing in Seattle forever and ever and ever. Uh, eventually, enough people would move here from Tacoma as snow shovel sellers that we would be back to our original zero profit point. Now, in the case of a storm, it's probably not going to get all the way back there because the storms just don't last that long. We're not going to get to that full long run equilibrium. Um, but when we're talking about other sorts of changes, we would expect this to happen. Right? Demand's going to shift. Eventually, you're going to get just more competition in that market until you get back to where you started. Now, what happens when the snowstorm ends? Well, the same thing is going to play out once again. Snowstorm is over. People don't want snow shovels anymore. It's going to be a drop in demand back to where it used to be. And maybe even lower because everyone already has a snow shovel. Now they don't need another one. This is going to reduce the price, which means that now we're making a loss. Now some people are making a loss. Uh, so all those people who loaded up their truck from Tacoma, they came into Seattle, they're making a bunch of money selling snow shovels for now. Storm's over, no more profit to be made. Go back home uh, so you can sell snow shovels in Tacoma again, or maybe they are now more needed than in Seattle. Again, bringing the stuff where it needs to be at the given time that it needs to be there. And then again, everyone goes back home. We end up with our long run equilibrium once again. This all works because we are working with economic profit rather than accounting profit. When economic profit is positive, that doesn't just mean you're making money. It means you're making more money here than somewhere else, which means that there is an incentive for someone from somewhere else to come join the market and take some of that profit from you. Uh, same thing with a loss. You're not necessarily losing money, but you're making less money than you would somewhere else. Prices drop, making a loss in Seattle, go back home to go. So these profits are going to draw sellers in bring the allocation of goods to the places where it needs to be and to the goods where it needs to be at. Just like the vodka sellers decided to start making more hand sanitizer and less vodka when the price of hand sanitizer spiked, they moved their production into the area where it was needed. 